my background is just like not aesthetic and I'm so sorry. I was going to wear something cuter, um, but it's cold and I don't want to take this sweater off. Don't you stop the music getting to it, won't you dance with me? Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be talking about a few things that I figured out slash wish somebody had told me early on about college. If you've never seen my face before, hi, I'm Varia. I have a cute little son and a wonderful boyfriend. So if you'd like to see more of our future videos, make sure you subscribe to myself, subscribe to my boyfriend, and follow our social medias below. I am really sorry to be burdening you with like back to school videos in July. Um, I don't want to be doing it either, but I feel that I always am way too late um, starting these videos. I guess every year I'm putting them out at the end of August and everybody's back to school at that point. This year I really wanted to make sure that I do it early enough so that those of you that are starting college, going back to college, whatever, kind of have um, my input, if you will. I, from now on until September it'll not be back to school videos. These are just a few I'm going to throw in randomly on my channel so that you guys kind of get an insight as to what I experienced and the advice that I can offer and this video will actually be broken down into two parts so you guys will see the second part on Sunday so subscribe just to make sure that you don't miss it and turn your bells on so that you're notified when it's uploaded um dog destroyed friendship one fridge uh I've never used a washing machine here you haven't and that's so disgusting yeah no. <laughs> like it's 9 30 at night nobody's getting beaten here like so I have compiled a list of five things that I have kind of been keeping track throughout my first year of university and for those of you that don't know I am starting my second year of criminal justice in the fall of 2018 yeah 2018 the university I go to is local, so I did not have to move away from home or anything. So these tips are specifically for when you're in school, and I found that they helped me out a lot. One of my absolute lifesavers throughout the first year of university was just staying on top and balancing and trying to manage the temperature at school. Of course, this is unique to every single facility, but my school, I don't know what it is, but it kind of... It wasn't generally cold. It kind of bounced around from classroom to classroom. But most classrooms I was in, it was freezing. So I, I had this scarf on every single day. I would wear it like a blanket. I would wrap up in it every single day and I would sit in class like this. I kid you not, this was my look. Um, it was so cold and this was just so cozy and like, I don't want to be here. I want to be at home and happy, but this is an okay in between. So yeah, just any scarf I thought I would always, I always had it on or I would just bring it with me, but in the winter where I live, it's really cold, so this was just an amazing, amazing clothing item to have in my wardrobe. Much like the temperature scarf hack, um, these tips are based off of my experience, so if you go to school in Hawaii or somewhere really warm, you will not be needing a blanket scarf. But for those of us that have to experience snow and negative temperatures, this is a great tip. Going into university, I found it extremely difficult to wrap my head around the, first of all, like how to study properly, how to study efficiently, but also how to take notes. And that may not seem like a big deal, but you know that that's your study material. They don't, professors don't often give out study guides or review packages or anything like that. So you really do have to make sure that your notes are on point. Something I noticed as I took many, many classes is that a lot of people will sit there and copy the PowerPoint being displayed and talked about directly onto their notes, but those PowerPoints are available on like the school website. So you're missing everything the prof is saying because you're so focused on writing that material down when it's available to you before and after class. I actually did try that once to see like, oh, maybe I'll... It didn't work. I did not do in that class as well as I have in the past where I have adapted different techniques. So it is trial and error, see what works for you. But what I did in a class that I was rather successful in was I would pull up a PowerPoint and the prof would usually release it like in the morning of, you know, before the 9 a.m. class or the night before or something like that. So what I would do is um, I would pull it up on my computer and I would have the PowerPoint there. And she would have a lot of notes that are extra, so she would put stuff on the board or she would talk about things. So what I would do is just in the header below the notes or in the footer or whatever, um, I would just write down what she's saying. Obviously not every single word that came out of her mouth, but everything that was important and key information she was saying, 
any new vocabulary, any acronyms, anything like that, I would be writing in there. Any notes that she's making, any references she's making. She would use a lot of comparisons that um, would really help you remember a concept. So I would write those things down to trigger my memory. And then after class, what I would do is I would go sit down and take an hour or so, go through that stuff. So I would compile everything I had. So the notes that she had plus the notes that I had made and I put it all on paper because that's how I learn. I like to write things out. It is scientifically proven that you need to review your notes within 24 hours for them to stick better. I believe you only retain about 30% after a lecture, but then if you review within 24 hours, I believe it's up to 70. I could be wrong with that, but I think those are the rough numbers. So it's really important that you do review no your notes and go over your stuff, otherwise it'll not stay in your brain. And come exam time, it was a lot easier for me just to go through my notebook instead of going through all the PowerPoints with all of my notes and all of those other things. So it was really easy just to go to my notebook and know exactly what to study. Now, I don't know if this one might come as a no-brainer or in what, but I found it extremely helpful to befriend at least one person in every class that you're in. Not only do you feel a little less intimidated going to that class because you know somebody and it's likely to be a little bit more enjoyable, but also in case you're sick or you're late or whatever something comes up, there's a person there that you can reference as far as stuff covered in class. I can recall only one class that I didn't sit next to a person I was like friends with, but in that class we had groups that we would go to almost every class, so I kind of had automatic friends, I guess. But in particular, you guys, there was a class I took, an English class, and there was a girl in there, we just happened to sit next to each other, and then she was an incredible person, and I'm so, so glad I got to know her, and like, it was awesome. I really, really liked her, so I have met some awesome people just by, you know, befriending them in a class, because it makes your experience so much better, and then, you know, you do have a friend to go to. Having said that though, it is important that you put in the effort after your class is over to upkeep that friendship. I find I'm not the best at this just because I am busy, but so is everybody else. It can be really challenging to get together and upkeep your friendship, but honestly it is so worth it with some people. So take the time, put your studies on a pause, and just go and spend some time with quality people because they're so important to have in your life. But having said that, I've also befriended people in class and never really spoken to them again since. Um, but it's just really good to have somebody in your class that you know that you can go to no matter what. And it's really good too if you're studying for an exam or something like that or whatever, just to go to them and be like, how did you interpret this? Or what are you doing for this? You know what I mean? So that you feel a little bit more secure and less nervous because going into university, I was really nervous about not knowing anybody in my program. And I've always been somebody that kind of bounces off people. Um, to really grasp a solid concept of what I'm supposed to be doing for a project or a paper or whatever So I was quite nervous about that, but I guess I'm right. Something my school has offered and I assume many other schools do too, but it was a mentor program I think I had mentioned this in the past briefly, but essentially what happened was we all got emails um, like the new students and we were offered to and invited to come to this um, orientation I guess where you were partner, partnered up with a mentor and in this program's case they would partner you up with somebody that was in your program so i was in first year criminal justice and i was partnered up with somebody that was in fourth year criminal justice so this person was an absolute lifesaver oh my goodness i cannot stress this enough i am so grateful for him because he made my first year especially my first semester such a breeze well okay let's not go that far but it was so much easier and just he was incredible help for us we met i think once a week and uh, he would help me because you know he has gone through this program he knows that the classes i was taking he also was able to tell me the professors to avoid which may sound a little petty and you know childish if you will but it's really not you know i really thought that terrible teachers were left behind in high school and grade school but it's not true there are still bad professors out there and you just need to know who to avoid. Having said that though, um, one of my favorite professors was my English one and he had terrible reviews online but I personally found him to be amazing so take it with a grain of salt I guess but he definitely told me some of the core professors in my faculty that just need to be avoided. And you know it, it can be 
a deal breaker. Like a good professor may make your grade well, a bad one may like have you fail the class. So it's really important that if you have those resources that you do access them because it may really cite you. But on top of that, he taught me how to cite, he taught me how to make a title page for my essays and you know, yes, you're given out booklets and you're forced to take APA workshops and such, but that stuff doesn't really retain and it's not as easy to apply to your own work when it's on paper and it's just like general examples. Whereas my mentor was able to help me and work with me on my personal paper. He showed me how to do in-text citation, he told me how to do a reference list and I know how to do it all now. You know, it sticks, you use it for the next four years and then you pray to God you never have to see it again. But based on that and with his help to grasp those concepts, I was also able to use a different citation form because I had to for one of my classes. But it was such, such a great help to have him and help me out. I would strongly stress that you look into this, see, ask questions, see if your school has this kind of program because it, it was seriously an amazing help and I really wish that more people would access it because none of my friends that I go to school with really did. I was probably one of the only ones I knew and I actually met a subscriber um, at that orientation and it was it was awesome. And my last tip I guess would be one um, that might get um, a little controversial. So in my opinion, universities love to take your money and if you disagree with me, feel free. But really, you're paying so much money for tuition, for books, for literally everything. They literally make you pay for everything. Parking, do you know how expensive parking is at university? Something that I was under the impression of is that when you walk into final exams, you're not allowed to have anything on you but like a pencil. But that is not the case. You are allowed to bring your bag. You do have to put it on the side of the room or something like that or in a bin. I don't know. But you are allowed to bring personal items with you. I didn't know this. So I assumed I had to get a locker. So I got a locker. My locker was $90, okay, where in everywhere else, as in grade school, it's free. You're assigned a locker. But no, in university, I paid $90 for a locker I used like twice. Um, yeah, so if you, again, do your research, I don't know, maybe some schools really don't allow you to bring anything but a pencil, but my school is not like that. So find out, see if that's the case. Um, if that is the case and you can bring stuff in, do not bother with a locker because I thought, oh, maybe I'll leave my jacket in there and whatever. No, I, I never did that. I always brought my jacket around with me. I always had all my stuff. I never went to my locker because the university is so big and then it's in this random little hallway that you don't ever want to go to because you're running from class to class. So in my personal opinion, the locker was a waste. Um, I don't know if some people may disagree. If you have a lot of stuff, maybe if you're a nursing student or something and you have a hundred of like textbooks this thick, perhaps you might want to consider a locker. But for me personally, it was not a wise investment and I will not be purchasing one again, let me tell you that. So those are the few tips I was able to collect over my first year of studying criminal justice. I really did enjoy my time. Um, well, I'm not done yet. <laughs> I really wanted to make this video so that some of you may be benefiting from it. Um, I don't know, let me know in the comments. Was this helpful? Did it help you? Did I give it a new perspective on something? Because I really hope I did. Make sure you give it a, this video a big thumbs up. I would really, really appreciate it. Subscribe to my channel. Subscribe to my boyfriend, Mitchell. He's an incredible, incredible man. And I really hope you guys go over and check out his videos because a lot of them include Stefan and I as well. Like I said, I really hope this video was helpful. Make sure you stick around for Sunday's video because that one will be uh, probably a little bit better than this one. But, you know, I've been vlogging a bunch lately too. Just a bunch of content coming out for you guys. I've been really trying to do two times a week, which is super, super new for me. It's something I have never done before and um, I'm really excited to be doing it. Make sure you go ahead and follow our Instagrams. We have such a fun time with Instagram. It is my favorite app. I love it. I love to talk to you guys. I'm constantly answering DMs and questions and comments and comments below videos because you guys are absolutely my favorite to talk to and it means the world to me that you take the time out of your day to comment on my video. So the least I can do is respond to you. I love you guys so, so much and can't wait to see you on Sunday. Bye. So I choke you.